cosmic horror is fascinating. Over the past two weeks, I've watched many videos on the genre and reread some Lovecraft stories. In this video, I will discuss the parts I love about cosmic horror and, well, my disagreements. I'm Madeline Rose Jones and I help you understand the world through fiction. Subscribe for videos about history, literature and culture. Out of all the subgenres of horror, the one I return to is of the cosmic kind. The king of the genre is, of course, H.P. Lovecraft. His short stories, frequently described as weird fiction, are full of existential dread and themes. While reading them, I felt an oppressive sense of dizziness and claustrophobia where anything seemed chaotic and out of order. The stories were confusing in the best way, and it's to Lovecraft's credit that other horror stories, such as Annihilation by Jeff Van Dierby and It by Stephen King, also resonate. Truth is, horror is not a genre I really enjoy watching or reading. There's certainly a danger in giving a surface level reading here, especially considering my lack of experience in the genre. But I find I really like talking and thinking about horror, mainly because it's the opposite to its rival, fantasy. Both fantasy and horror deal with the unknown, the esoteric, the yet to be revealed. In The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the knowledge absorbed by the children is akin to a personal enlightenment. Narnia is not just a magical land, but an uplifting portrayal of discovery, curiosity and adventure. It's no wonder that scholars of Christianity and religion, more broadly, are drawn to the lush worlds depicted by Lewis and Tolkien. This, of course, is a sharp contrast to horror, where, although the world is just as descriptive and immersive, it is, well, horrifying. Traditionally, in a horror story, the characters must discover new knowledge. You see this in Stephen King's It, where the children must uncover secrets and lore about the evil clown Pennywise. Other horror tales may range from a serial killer next door to something more dreadful, such as the devil himself. In Matthew Lewis's classic novel, The Monk, they keep character Ambrioso, who was initially believed to be a gift from the Virgin Mary, ends up dabbling in witchcraft and evil violence, bringing him closer to Lucifer. However, it's unfair to say that the monk or any horror story is against the pursuit of knowledge. Rather, horror is more interested, and this is a clever part of the genre, in what this knowledge actually is. This returns us back to cosmic horror. Unlike fantasy fiction and many other subgenres of horror, the chances of characters triumphing over the adversity presented are slim, but it's not impossible. Cosmic horror shouldn't be confused with horror stories that take place in outer space, like the Alien movies. Rather, cosmic horror is distinct and is underpinned by humanity having insignificance, God not existing, characters losing grip on reality, and the progressive alienation of our lives. Yet, the roots of cosmic horror are also found in traditional philosophy, such as the existential writers of the 19th and the 20th century contributed much to Lovecraft's weird fiction. To quote the man himself, the world is indeed cosmic, but the joke is on mankind. Here's the thing. I disagree with cosmic horror. Whilst it's difficult and maybe problematic to summarise all of cosmic horror into bullet points of belief, there are surely core tenets that animate the genre. Returning to knowledge, cosmic horror cautions the discovery of it. Mankind is truly in a web of threats thus reducing the potential and importance of every human being. While watching the movie Annihilation, 
I was struck by how helpless the women were against the distortions of reality and the crude imitations. Martin Heidegger, the German philosopher, warns that longing is the agony of the nearest of the distance, and this applies very well to cosmic horror. Humans may shut unsettling thoughts and passions down, sometimes with reason or faith, but still the threat remains. I believe that knowledge about the universe and God isn't scary or will make us extinct. Personally, I'm drawn to stories where man clearly matters. This is why I love Dostoevsky. Even in a bleak story with powerless characters, I acknowledge the importance each man and woman wields, whether it's for reflection, developing faith and relationships, creating meaning, deepening their knowledge or experiencing love. I'm forever drawn to Victor Hugo for this reason. In both Les Mis and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the characters embark on a significant journey and the readers do too. To me, this is a superior depiction of life and mankind than cosmic horror, in my opinion. Lovecraft's stories feature characters who turn mad at the discovery of ancient alien law. Yet, I do not fear this, because I don't believe the universe or knowledge itself exists to make us small and insignificant. However, there's wisdom in cautioning about the nature of knowledge. Returning to Heidegger, we must remember, he who thinks great thoughts often makes great errors. This is very wise, as no knowledge can make man immune from folly or guarantees enlightenment. Perhaps the power in cosmic horror is the constant overbearing reminder that maybe I'm wrong. These philosophical and theological beliefs, dear to my heart, may not have any basis in fact or the future I live in. This is why cosmic horror is valuable. Not every story needs to reflect me and my thoughts. We need stories that differ, that threaten, that are transgressive, and at times, nightmarish. What are your thoughts? Do you have any recommendations for cosmic horror? Please share them in the comments. Also, if literary analysis interests you, make sure you check out my free guide to writing book reviews, linked in the description box. You'll also sign up to my monthly newsletter through it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.